Hi, welcome to today's episode where we're going to be talking about Raging Bull. Stick around and find out how this movie is connected to Casino, other than by Martin Scorsese, Robert De Niro, Frank Vincent, and Joe, Joe Pesci. Pesci. Hi, I'm Shay. I'm Peter. And you're listening to Stellar, Stellar Alignment. Alignment. Welcome to episode 7, where we're covering 1980's Raging Bull, directed by Martin Scorsese. Written by Joseph Carter and Peter Savage, based on the book by Jake LaMotta. Starring Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, Kathy Moriarty, and we get to see a little Frank Vincent in here again. What did you think of the movie? There are certain aspects of this movie that I can really appreciate and that I really enjoyed. I'm a Martin Scorsese fan. I, I, there's a number of his movies that I love. Casino, one of our the ones that we've already covered, I enjoyed very much. Hugo. You love Hugo. <laughs> uh, not too shabby. Not top of my list. I cried so much. Goodfellas, which we still have coming up, mm -hmm. is a classic. Love it. Mm -hmm. The Departed. Uh, oh, the Departed. Aviator. Oh. Gangs in New York. Wow. Shutter Island. Shutter Island. Yeah. I like that one. So ah, Leo. everyone here knows that we love us some Joe Pesci. Yeah. Robert De Niro never turns in a no, bad performance. I was going to save this parallel for later. He did a great job, by the way. He did a great, great job. It's just in the past couple movies we've seen him in, Casino, um, What's Upon a Time, time in America, America, and Pure Raging Bull, he's not the greatest of guys. And I can't think of what specific movie i've seen him in that he's been so good that we're always on his side and that's a testament to his acting chops even if he plays a shitty person and he definitely plays a shitty person in this movie based on jake lamada he does such an amazing job and the portrayal is so realistic that you still like him somehow it's still enjoyable to watch an actor act well even when they play horrible characters you're probably thinking of robert de niro in stardust i love him in stardust too <laughs> <laughs> which is like how do you not love robert de niro he was when hilarious. he plays a gay pirate yeah i think that there's amazing things about this movie the editing is like phenomenal the choreography of the boxing scenes is tremendous sure. the music aligned with the boxing a lot of classical music throughout the film mostly in black and white the, is yes very poetic you once said yeah and i think that like that's the thing is martin scorsese spent months working on the choreography for this movie and apparently if you add it all up it's only about 10 minutes worth of boxing scenes you're not really watching a fight you're watching kind of this dance right? people that are fans of the sport of boxing refer to it as a dance he's able to catch that on film here and we're able to witness it one thing for me that i i really did enjoy and i remember i made a note about it when it happened was the montage between his um his fights and also the kind of home footage home home movie footage that they showed mm -hmm. that was in color every every part of the rest of the movies in black and white but they have this home footage right after he gets married to Vicky Kathy Moriarty's character of them and then raising the kids and then of course jo Joey and his wife are involved in these scenes got married as well and they cut back and forth between the fights in black and white in this footage and I just thought it was a really cool additive to the movie because the rest Way of it was doing in black and white passing. and a, a cool piece of trivia there is they had their regular cameramen shoot these shots and apparently they were coming out too professional because they're professional cameramen. So apparently they got some tradesmen that were there on set to shoot these home footage, home video scenes. So it was all kind of shaky and like a, a regular person was shooting it, which I thought was a cool piece of trivia. That, that is cool. That, that's a good touch. There's something about this film in particular for both of us that just didn't quite hit hit home for us. I think I'm just not a fan of biopics or 
things that are based on real life stories. I had an issue with Casino in the same way. There's just no point of it. You like to have kind of the 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 arc, the hero I arc, do like the that, normal yeah. hero arc, and a really good conclusion. But there's a bit of that in this. You see this. You see this character changing. Well, you see the fighter. He he's he's already he's already a fighter. He's well into his career. He's we see the very beginning where he actually loses his first match. Mm -hmm. We see this progression of his character throughout the movie. He's married when the movie begins, and obviously that's not a happy marriage. No, very and, volatile. And yeah, he's you can tell right away that he's not a great guy. Mm -hmm. He's yelling at his wife. He's yelling at his neighbors. It's clear the anger that he uses at, in the sport of boxing has encompassed his entire life. Yeah, he like the people that go up against him don't like to fight him, and in fact. He has trouble getting fights further into his career because people just don't want to mess with Jake LaMotta. He was a a rough, dangerous character, and you can see that in the ring, but more than anything, Scorsese really highlights how he was that way outside of the ring. In the home life, yeah. Even um, with with his brother, who, who you can tell. played by Joe Pesci. Yeah. He Wonderfully. did a great job. You can definitely tell. There's no violence that we see on screen, but you can tell that he has a volatile character just by the way that Joe Pesci kind of like doesn't say certain things or walks on eggshells. Jake LaMotta is supposed to be Joey LaMotta's older brother. So De Niro's his older brother, even though in real life Pesci is six months older than De Niro. You can tell that probably Joey had to, like you said, walk on eggshells around him because you don't want to piss off Jake. He's yeah. not the type of guy that you want to piss off. You don't want to be on his bad side. Mm -hmm. And he got by probably by doing that. Yeah. And, and, and when Jake did push him, like in, in the famous scene, the hit me scene where he's asking him to hit him and he won't hit him until finally he, he slaps him around and he starts hitting him. Yeah. You can tell that he doesn't even want to, even when he's instigated even when he's cornered yeah, you know to hit him because because if it does escalate he has no chance against against his brother he's not a professional boxer and other boxers who are professional don't want to fight this dude yeah apparently de niro and pesci really hit each other in and that scene hitting. they were really slapping each other around there's also a, a scene where they're sparring and pesci's got a bunch of pads on mm-hmm Gets his his rib broken. Yeah. When they're sparring. Yeah. We see Same rib. an extra connection at the very end of Casino when Pesci's character Nikki is killed and then pushed into the hole in the ground in the cornfield. Pesci apparently broke his rib for a second time. That exact same rib, same rib. that he broke in Raging Bull during the shooting. So uh, a fun piece of trivia there. Doing his own stunts. Yeah. I also want to say that Robert De Niro was jacked. Robert De Niro is super jacked. In this Especially movie. in the beginning. Um, like, he went through extensive training. I saw a little tidbit of trivia that he went and did three actual fights and won two of them. Yeah. De Niro spent a lot of time with LaMotta. And LaMotta even said that De Niro could hold his own and probably could be a fighter if he wasn't an actor. So, And you can tell his physique is insane. I don't know if you've ever seen Cape Fear, another Scorsese yeah. movie, but um, he's also pretty jacked in that movie. Mm -hmm. But definitely given um, today's Hollywood superheroes a run for their money, a link to another Hollywood superhero putting on 60 pounds oh, yeah. within three months during the filming, giving Mr. Mr. Christian Bale a run for his Way money. Way before Christian Bale. Um, talk okay. about... Yeah, talk about method acting, but throwing on those pounds. Towards the end of the movie, I thought it was a different actor. Yeah, I, really, you, I think you asked at one point, like, is he wearing this, really? a bodysuit? Is that really him? Somebody else. And then they and then... show him with his shirt open. Yeah, and it's really him. Yeah. De Niro, one of, one of the old school method actors, taking a page from Brando's book. Also, connections to Brando because of the monologue at the end of the movie where LaMotta is very plainly referencing uh, on the waterfront 
And there was definitely speculation on Scorsese's part that people might connect this movie to On the Waterfront because that has a very similar feel about this fighter that never got his due, although Jake LaMotta kind of did get his due. Eventually, but yeah. very interesting to get that connection between Brando and De Niro because of their form of acting, mm -hmm. but also LaMotta to character in On the Waterfront for Brando. Uh, another side note, Brando and De Niro both played Don Corleone in Godfather mm -hmm. 1 and Godfather 2. They're making connections all over the place. Yeah. Wow. Cinema. Cinema. Amazing stuff. So this wasn't the movie for me, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and that's okay. I mean, <laughs> I definitely... So I've seen this movie before. All we were watching it, I remember the first time I watched it. I was like 20 years old. It's Raging Bull. It's a movie that's considered to be one of the best in film of all time. When you hear like, what what's good American cinema that I need to watch? Raging Bull is one of those movies that always comes up. And I remember wanting to watch it when I was a kid. I was at that age where I started to explore film. And I kind of remember at that time, like not being fully in it. And then when we rewatched it, it's like, yeah, this just isn't quite the movie for me. There were parts that I really liked though. Like uh, I could see why they were, uh, they won an Oscar for editing. I think it was an Oscar. They won an, an Oscar for, nominated for eight Oscars. Yes. One for editing. Uh, De Niro won for best actor. This was Pesci's first Oscar nomination. However, he didn't win. And it's good to note that this is Pesci's first big role in a, a big movie because yeah. before this all he had done was the death collector mm -hmm. which is where um scorsese and him. de niro discovered him and he holds his own among de niro you gotta watch these docs you can see why he ends up having this partnership with de niro and scorsese over the years because he has this natural just kind of charm and charisma he he's He's literally a natural yeah. with very little training or anything like that. Some people have it. Even though that neither of us were huge fans of the movie, we can at least appreciate that Pesci was amazing. He did a De great job. De Niro was amazing in pretty much anything he does, but you don't always get to see him transform into a, a different person like he does here. He doesn't mm -hmm. do a lot of biopics, and he he is amazing as this real life person yeah who absolutely apparently a is, little bit of trivia is not that great of a guy or at least isn't portrayed that well in the movie and apparently when jake lamana saw the the finished film it brought him to tears and made him realize uh kind of the error of his ways he wasn't yeah the best guy back then yeah and you have to say that those negative character traits are probably what made him the great fighter that he was. Mm -hmm. But it definitely didn't help him as a person with the relationships in his life. And then after he stopped fighting, it, it was clearly not an asset. That, when he also had, he had nothing else, right? He had nothing after that. And he tried to move on to being an entertainer. He had his, his own nightclub and mm -hmm. do like stand up. And it was actually just more sad than anything. Mm -hmm. So, so, like, he was overweight. Eventually, uh, his second wife, Vicky, who is played by Kathy Moriarty, leaves him. Mm -hmm. And it just, it, it just seems like his life fell apart after that. Also, Moriarty was nominated for uh, an Oscar as well. Didn't win, but this apparently was her first film. I think she was just discovered kind of out of nowhere and has gone on to do a, a lot more things mm -hmm. since then. This movie was nominated for a she ton of stuff. Unique. Very like unique. Her. Yeah. The first place I ever saw her was Casper. Mm. She pops up again with De Niro and analyzes that. Oh. Yeah. Kind of play off of this relationship issue that Jake LaMotta's character has. Similar, at least a little bit, to De Niro's character of Ace in Casino, to tie back to Scorsese. And it has these trust issues mm -hmm. uh, getting in paranoid. the second half of Casino. You see the same thing with LaMotta. He starts to have these trust issues with his wife where anything she does, he's just questioning it. Mm -hmm. And then starts to question his own brother, Joey, played by Pesci. 
And, you know, finally it comes to a point where he accuses the two of them of sleeping together and then beats the shit out of Joey. Yeah. And, and they become estranged after that. Sad to see someone who was amazing in one, one aspect of his life um, have such kind of this negative part of the rest of his life. Yeah. Most notably, Jake LaMotta had numerous bouts against Sugar Ray Robinson. Very famous scene of at the end of the fight where Sugar Ray just beats the ever living fuck out of him, and he but doesn't, doesn't, doesn't get fall. And uh, De Niro or LaMotta walks over and says, "You never got me down, Ray." De Niro, man, God, he's so fun to watch he's pretty fun to watch this one was a little hard for me and maybe just because of the character that he was playing um i just wanted to be a good guy a slow pacing too right? charming good guy yeah and it I, was a little slow in the beginning this isn't typical of scorsese this is an early film and this is definitely his big breakout film uh i think i read somewhere that just before he did raging bull he was thinking about moving out of america and moving to like europe somewhere to to do different types of film he just he wasn't quite making it the way he wanted here and then raging bull is what kind of catapulted him mean streets is the only one that's kind of coming to mind of course he done uh taxi driver with de niro also i've never seen taxi driver oh my gosh see i don't think you would like taxi driver so. i probably wouldn't the early scorsese films have this slow pacing that I don't think that you would appreciate. What did I see De Niro in that made me love him so much? Tell me. Somebody tell me. Tell us. When he's young and he's attractive and charming, why why Once does upon he... Once a time in America? No, because then he's even though he's well there. He's rapey. Yeah, he's a little rapey. <sighs> wait, wait till I force you someday to watch... The Godfather trilogy, because it's gonna happen. Well, we're gonna have to do it for this. Really? So you're locked in. How about we do Sopranos instead? I'll watch that again. Let's, no, we've watched that. We're gonna watch Godfather. If you appreciate The Sopranos, then you have to watch Godfather. Every person out there agrees with me, right? Yes. We should mention that Frank Vincent once again appears in this mm -hmm. Scorsese film. Uh, good to know that this is also Frank Vincent's first role in a Scorsese film because, if I'm not mistaken, De Niro and Scorsese reached out to Joe Pesci after they saw him in Death Collector to offer him this role, and Pesci, being in a comedy act with Frank Vincent, think asked to have his buddy Frank be brought into the fold. Oh my god, and is that why? This is why Frank Vincent also got a role in Raging Bull and also appears in future Scorsese films, especially those that have Joe Pesci in them. Like Adam Sandler and his buddies all yeah. over again. We also get to see Joe Pesci beat the ever-loving shit out of Frank Vincent in this film. Oh yeah. Um, we might see something similar when we happen to see Goodfellas. We might not, because Frank Vincent is in that movie. Um, I, I won't give any spoilers, but, you know, you should go home and get your fucking shine box. So funny. Yeah, you'll know. And, of course, Frank Vincent beats the fuck out of Joe Pesci at yeah. the end of Casino. So we get to see this back and forth where him and, and Pesci beat each other up, which is kind of fun and a little bit of... Fun film trivia. Yeah. I did have a note that every scene with De Niro and Pesci together is amazing. So, although I'm not a big fan of the pacing of the movie, and maybe it's just the the, the subject matter itself, Jake Lamont is not a great guy, and I don't really care about his character. It is, as always, a thrill to watch De Niro and Pesci play off each other. But Joe Pesci did a great job. Ultimately, the film is about him trying to to get a a champion to win a championship, and he wins it. And as soon as he does, he kind of he wins it, and then he's like, "That's it." That's it, and he kind of like lets himself go almost immediately. And I don't he doesn't lose it right away, but I think it's it's not long after. And then he like immediately declines afterwards. So it's like you 
you worked so hard all these years for this one thing, and as soon as you got it, you let it go. That one thing. And then everything else that was important to you, you destroyed also because of your just shitty Anger. attitude. Yeah. And, you know, had his, his wife leave him, his brother leave him. They do end up reconciling, which they show briefly in the movie. Very briefly. And, like, by chance, it's not like he went out and he found him and, like, tried to reconcile. He saw him at the convenience store. Which just happened to see him. Happened to see him. Like yeah. based on the character and the lack of growth there, I totally could see it. Yeah, and then it ends with him overweight. You know, prepping before he goes out on stage in his nightclub or whatever. It's it not is. even in his nightclub. He is on and like a like two-man on the, on the show. Road or There's something. this yeah. woman who dances, and he's prepping and himself, dance. but with the the. The monologue in On the Waterfront with Brando, where he's like, the, I could have been a contender. And, you know, like, he was a contender. That's the difference. It's like, the character in On the Waterfront, which is fiction, he he had a chance, but it was kind of stolen away from him. Jake LaMotta had his chance, and it was there right in front and of him. He, he kind of stole it away from himself. You know, and he he doesn't even realize, like, there's no I, one else to blame. I, yeah, I could have I could have been a contender. You were a contender and you you blew it, you know. It's it's actually really sad. Yeah. Overall, not a not a huge fan of Raging Bull. That's okay. I hope anyone who sees this doesn't hate me for for not being a fan of Raging Bull. I love a lot of other Scorsese stuff, De Niro, but you know, you can't love them all. Yeah. Um let's rate this bitch. Okay, Rotten Tomatoes. So the tomato meter is a 93%. Wow. We're going against the grain here. Yep. Uh, the audience score is also a 93%. Mm, yep. Wow, wow, wow. IMDb, uh, IMDb is 8.2 out of 10. 82%. 82%. So I'm very embarrassed to give this the rating that I'm I'm about to give it. And I think before we get into our, our own ratings, we did tease last time that we were going to go back through the first half of this season and talk about the ratings that we've given the so other far. movies and then we'll go into today's rating. We started out this season with Joe Pesci and With Honors. I gave that a 7 and Shay gave it a 6. Uh, we then moved on to My Cousin Vinny which I gave an 8 and Shay gave a 10. Then Once Upon a Time in America where we both gave that a 12. Easy Money, we both gave that a 1, so we've got our bookends there. <laughs> Casino Next, I gave that a 10, and Shay gave that an 8. And last week we did Lethal Weapon, three, uh, sorry, 2, 3, and 4. I gave that a 6, and Shay gave that a 5. Man, am I really going to rate this below with honors? I was also just thinking that. I'm kind of having second, like, not because I'm afraid of what other people will think, because now that we've talked about it, I'm like, there's a lot of good things about there's this film. There's a lot film. of good things about the film. And, it and is good. It's well done. The acting is incredible. I think the thing I about... I just didn't like it. The thing about us is... I didn't like what was happening. We really focus on the characters and the story of the film, and a lot of times we forget about the technical issues, you know? The, the shooting, the camera setups, the editing, the lighting, the costumes and the design and yeah. all of these other things that go into a film because we're kind of just like amateur critics. We we're not real film like critics. We like. And we only focus on these few aspects just because we didn't like Jake LaMotta doesn't make, make this a bad film. And yeah, the pacing's not great. So I'm gonna give this a five which is still my second lowest, but that means I still have two, three, and four to fill in. And we've still got a, a decent roster of movies coming up. So again, these are not set in stone. We can rearrange if we want to. And you know, who knows, by, by week 12, we might decide to fully rearrange. I'm gonna give it a five as well. And I'm going to move Lethal Weapon down a rank. Ooh. So four. Even with how much you love... I love Jet Li. Joe Pesci as oh. Leo Getz. I do love... Oh, God. Why are you doing this to me? 
Yeah, it, no, it, I'm putting it at a four. Raging Bull's a four. Raging Bull's a four. Leo get, gets it. We're, we're going to probably do some rearranging, but at least we know <laughs> where we stand right now. Appreciate you listening in for this episode. We will be discussing JFK next week. Oliver Stone. Very little Pesci in this one. Very little Pesci. Not as little as Once Upon a Time in America, okay. but, but <laughs> still very little Pesci. Um, but a film worth watching. And it's been a long time since I've seen it. I think you've seen it before. Yeah, it was a long time, long time ago. ago. I think you forced me to watch it. Yeah, that's usually what happens. It's for your own good. Okay. Just like Godfather. You're going to watch it and you're going to like it. Are there any cute boys in it? It's like, yeah, young De Niro, young Al Pacino, uh, young James Caan. Hello. You don't know. <laughs> Back me up, internet. <laughs> so we'd love to hear what you guys think about Raging Bull. Uh, we're not huge fans of it, but that doesn't mean anything. We're just two people with opinions. Let us know in the comments, either on YouTube if you're watching this, or wherever you might be listening to the podcast. Also, please remember to rate and review and subscribe and like and all those good things. Mm -hmm. You can hit us up on Instagram, too. That's probably the best place to interact with us. It's our age range. Send us a DM. But we're also on all those other places, too. Twitter, Facebook, mm -hmm. TikTok. Hit us up. Like us. Give us all your feedback. We'd love to hear it. And I'm sure you've noticed that we're not in the car today. Although we decided that we, we liked the atmosphere of being in the car right after we got out of the movies, we realized that the sound and the footage that we were coming out with was not great. So we brought it back inside and we just decided to have a more concise review of... of what we just watched so trying to keep it short and sweet and hopefully delicious for you yeah delicious I'm okay gonna, i stand by that <laughs> okay that's fine <laughs> so please join us next week for jfk thank you again for joining us today and we will see you on the flip side see you later or see you at another time yeah very confused i don't I don't know if I'm going to see you. We'll, we'll see you later. We'll, we'll see you later. Do you keep saying footage? Footage? Yeah, I've heard it pronounced both ways. Back me up, internet. Footage, right? Footage. Footage.